superintendent of BRICS joins in to talk about that. Anand, morning. Before we get to the market, how would you approach telecom now? Telecom so strictly. Uh, the, uh, obviously, the 3G license numbers are becoming fairly large. And uh, while one could have argued that uh, you know, beyond a certain number, you could still justify it on the basis of efficiencies that you'll be able to drive in your system. Uh, the fact is that I think now we're getting to uh, evaluations which will make it difficult for anybody to make money on it in the near term. The numbers itself, however, uh, overall seem to be stabilizing, so that's somewhat better news. But I think, uh, you know, the uh, heydays are over in terms of the kind of growth on the margins that uh, companies were getting. From here on, growth has to plateau. And, uh, you know, margins will remain somewhat uh, under pressure, especially if this uh, uh, number portability actually comes through. Already the lobbies have managed to push the number portability back quite a bit. But uh, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that the regulator will not be overwhelmed by the lobbying and will force it through. And if that were to happen, I think you'll have another round of bloodletting. Mm. Bloodletting done for the market, you think, or not yet? Uh, well, I mean, you know, as we've highlighted earlier, uh, the, there are, uh, you know, a lot of issues that can uh, blow up, and we just saw one happening the, uh, earlier this week. Uh, temporarily, it has been kind of papered over by putting a lot more debt into the system than already is. The amazing part is that the market seems to react uh, positively to saying that, you know, debt can be solved by issuing more debt, but that's the way it is right now. Uh, so, you know, how will the market react from here on? I think all the risks that we've highlighted continue to remain. Uh, I think the valuations still are slightly on the higher side, though obviously because the market has come down a bit uh, over the last month or so, it has uh, to that extent eased off. Uh, so far, we don't see any reason to change our views. Anand Morning, what would you do with uh, banks at this point in time? Because that's a sector that has been quite resilient up until now. And um, the earnings season also proved to be quite good for the entire banking lot. Would you support that sector and think that from here on uh, there would be an up move both with PSUs and private? So we have to deal with what's going on with the rest of the world and look at banks in India. I think the credit growth for some time has been somewhat muted. Uh, we think that uh, the credit growth will actually pick up once the international money markets become a little tighter and the spreads increase even further from what they are. Uh, therefore, for the near term, it would look like uh, that the business environment is reasonably benign. Interest rates uh, haven't actually moved up very much and uh, there is a possibility that the credit growth will, uh, will move up again. Uh, that said, I think structurally it is not necessarily a great place to be now anymore because of the simple fact that from here on we expect the, uh, the yield curve to actually flatten. Uh, remember that the uh, RBI's ability to raise uh, long-term interest rates is still uh, somewhat uh, capped because of the arbitrage that exists between the international rates and, and the domestic rates. On the, on the other hand, the shorter term rates have to be something that they have to keep picking up given the fact that their own borrowing requirements for the government is quite high as well as for the fact that, uh, uh, so that will squeeze out some of the liquidity, plus uh, the fact that, you know, we are still struggling with inflation, which is very high, therefore they have to show some policy rate increases. So we expect flattening of yield curve, which is uh, usually not necessarily great for the mark for the banking sector, because, you know, typically the banks make most money when the yield curve is sharp. Mm. Well, what's the better way to map the medium term for this market, that it remains extremely uh, volatile, but more or less is able to defend its range because of what's happened with earnings performances, etc.? Or do you think that theory as well may be up for a knock? I don't even know if that anybody is postulating that. I think most people are in the bull camp and arguing that the uh, economic growth in the Indian market is extremely high and consequently would result in... Uh, uh, markets going up. Uh, you know, obviously, I think that the risks in the market are significant and uh, the valuations do not leave uh, enough room for upside, especially since most of the earnings growth for the next year, for the current year, that is, is coming through uh, three major th sectors, which is banking, um, oil and gas, and metals, none of which are uh, going to be done, have anything much to do with the domestic market. Most of them are. Uh, sectors which will be dominated by uh, price movements, either interest rate or uh, of commodities, and uh, which will be determined globally. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure that uh, the Indian GDP has anything to do with the stock market in the near term. Uh, together with that, our old argument that, uh, you know, there's more than enough supply of paper to take care of any incremental shocks that we may have in terms of inflows of money, 
continues to remain dominant. So I think there is a cap on the market on the way up. Uh, on the way down, I think, you know, uh, depending on which particular uh, shock triggers of uh, downside, anything can happen. And therefore, you know, my bet is that uh, there isn't that much that you're going to lose if you were to remain uh, somewhat uh, negative or uh, out of the market for a while on the way upside. On the other hand, on the downside, you could save yourself a lot of grief. Mm. Are you sensing a leadership problem as well, Anand? I mean, banks, of course, have done their bit and the numbers have backed them up. But besides that, there doesn't seem to be a clear or discernible leader for this market. Um, as I said, you know, the, the three sectors which are supposed to lead the earnings for the current year are all uh, commodities and oil and gas and things like that. Uh, oil and gas, as you are aware, in India doesn't leave much upside and every now and then we have this excitement that we will get into a free market, forgetting of course the fact that we have also a big inflation issue and therefore if you actually allow prices to go up, uh, as they invariably will if you were to uh, deregulate the price control, uh, given the fact that you know, the, the, the government is extremely hungry and uh, therefore taxes uh, these uh, uh, oil and gas, especially the petroleum products, at uh, obnoxiously high tax rates. Uh, therefore, uh, these companies, you know, every now and then you see a spike, but you have to keep in mind that uh, the deregulation, if it were to happen, will happen only after, uh, after the uh, peaks in inflation have kind of ironed themselves out uh, at a high level. So it's not, in my view, likely to happen anytime soon. Uh, on the commodities, of course, you know, again, Hindalco reported very good numbers, but uh, if you look at what's, been, what's happening with Alcoa, where the volumes are not picking up, and also keep in mind the fact that, uh, you know, China has uh, some real issues. The Chinese market is telling you that it is down 20% over the last four or five months and it is down 50% from the peak. That has its own story given that China is the incremental demand supplier for uh, commodities, especially metals. So I'm not sure that uh, you know there is anything much uh, that can actually provide leadership in India. The rest of the sectors, I mean, of course, there is things like construction, which is where I think you still have places to hide. So I would still look at uh, you know banking because of a lack of reason, of any other reason other than uh, you know nowadays it is uh, fairly safe to assume that banks can't come down; they can only go up. Uh, IT because you know I think uh, there will be a mean reversion of of the rupee, and uh, it has to uh, give off some of the gains that it has had over the last few uh, months. Uh, other export oriented uh, uh, sectors because of the same argument. Construction because as I said uh, that's the one place where any infrastructure uh, increase will actually lead to uh, more activity and consequently hopefully some more profits. For the rest of it I think you know it's, uh, it could go either way. Mm.